Here are my current top 5 Z80 hacks in 5 minutes. While building the monitor for the Tech 1G, I came across some amazing and interesting Z80 hacks that I used to create the monitor. Here are the five Z80 hacks that I used to make this code more efficient and quicker. Number five, compare HL and DE. We have two 16-bit registers, HL and DE, and I like to compare them. So I can use the subtract with carry operator. First I'll clear the carry flag and then use SBC HL to DE. And what this does is take DE from HL minus the carry, but it does modify HL. Sometimes you don't want that. So simply just adding an add HL to DE will fix the HL register to what it was before. And wouldn't add HL DE change the, the flags? Well no, it doesn't actually change the flags at all. So at this point, zero will be set if HL equal DE, or the carry flag set if HL is less than DE. Number four, inline data. Sometimes you would like to have hard-coded data straight after procedures to make it easier to know what's going on. Something like this. You want to call print string, and what string would I like to print? Well, straight after I can print the words ready Z80. When a call instruction is executed, the program counter will change to the location where print string is, and the address of the next line will be put on the stack. The call returns, it will start executing from the next line, and we can use this feature to access the next line. So for instance, here's our print string routine, and immediately I'll call pop HL, which will set the return address to HL, which is now pointing to the letter R. And then we can just iterate through the string, getting the value of pointing to HL into A, incrementing HL to the next address, so now it's sitting at E, comparing if it's zero, and if it is zero, exit. Otherwise, we do something with the character, like output it to an LCD screen. And we just loop again until we come down to the exit routine. And then simply because the we've already incremented HL after zero, HL is now the next line. So we just jump back to the address at HL, which is the next line. Number three, hidden instructions. If you look at the Z80 instruction set, there's a lot of gaps where there's no instructions at all. But some clever people have figured out that those gaps actually do something. These are called undocumented instructions, which are now mostly documented. And I use some of these to help me develop my Frogger game. You can see here I've got four sprites of a frog. Well, they kind of look like a frog. This is facing upwards to the right, down and left. The data is sequential and are eight bytes long. If I use IX to reference the picture, there's no official instruction to look at the lower byte or the higher byte of IX, but there is. And here's the code. First, I get the direction, one, two, three, or four. I multiply that direction by eight to index it properly. I load IX to point to the picture data, and then I add A, which is the index, to the lower byte of IX, IXL, and this is the hidden instruction. And then I update the lower byte of IX with the new corrected index. And if there's a carry based on this add here, I would also update the higher byte of IX. Now I have the correct index. And here's our little frog moving around the screen. Number two, XOR magic key. XOR is a Boolean operator, which stands for exclusive OR. If you XOR two numbers together, let's say five and seven, you get the number two. And that's the magic key. How do I use the two? Well, if I XOR two with five or two with seven, I produce seven or five. I use this on the tech to distinguish between am I in data mode or address mode, DA or AD. And here's the code. I first calculate the magic key by loading A with D and B with A. And then I XOR A and B together to get the magic key. I store that in the register B, and then I just pick the first character. I then call a routine to get the mode. Am I in data or address mode? If it is zero, well, I don't need to flip it because it's already D, data mode. I just print it out, flip it, and then print the letter A. But if it is in address mode, I flip it first by calling X or B. That will make the register A, now the letter A, print out A, flip it again, print out D. And here it is flipping around. Pretty cool, hey? Number one, use CPI for iteration. What is the CPI instruction? It stands for compare and increase. How does it work? It compares the register A at the address HL. It also increases HL by one, decreases BC by one, and 
If you use CPOR, it will repeat until BC equals zero or A equals the contents of HL. There's also CPD and CPDR to decrease HL by one. So let's say I've got some text pointing to HL and I need to print out 200 hex bytes of length. I use this simple routine. Load A with the value pointing to HL. Call a routine to do something with it. This one here, transmit it by FTDI. Then I do CPI, which will increase HL and decrease BC. But how do I know BC is zero? I just check the parity overflow flag. And there you have it, my current top five Z80 hacks. If you know of any interesting Z80 hacks that you've used, post it in the comments below. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video enlightening and we'll see you next time.